What's up everyone? Welcome back to Rally Pharma and this is World's Best Doctors channel. If you think this is a good idea guys, please subscribe. I'm starting out a series of careers in pharmacy and today guys, drum rolls. <laughs> I have a special guest. I know most of you know her if you follow me all the time. She's one of my friends and she's going to introduce herself. Then I introduce the topic of the day. So welcome, Dr. Tari. Kindly introduce yourself to my audience. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace, Grace Njeri. Um, I'm a pharmacist by profession. And right now I'm working as a production or manufacturing pharmacist. But I've worked previously in pharmacovigilance and quality assurance thank you please okay. subscribe to her channel please do yes yeah. so uh today we are going to talk about like uh, pharmacovigilance as a career in pharmacy you know yeah i'm trying to actually put their careers out there in pharmacy so that if there's anyone who's interested in becoming a pharmacist with a like a specialty then they can choose whatever they want so you can tell us like what is pharmacovigilance okay so uh, broadly or technically, pharmacovigilance is the science and activities related to understanding, detecting, and reporting uh, health related uh, effects from medicines. So that is very technical, but generally, in layman's language, pharmacovigilance is where we report maybe poor quality medicines or mm -hmm. adverse drug reactions that mm -hmm. arise from taking medicines okay yes. yeah so she's actually simplified it and yeah so let us look at uh, the roles and the responsibilities of someone who is doing pharmacovigilance so how is your day-to-day -day, like activities like when it comes to pharmacovigilance yeah. okay so mostly in our setup we have not reached the point where patients are actively reporting about adverse drug reactions so in my day-to-day -day activity or our previously you'll find that what is reported mainly is poor quality medicines. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a call from customer care or from the regulator or, or even a member of the company where they say maybe your medicine is having this and this, uh, maybe it's having spots on the tablets, maybe the liquid, the color is different. So there are more of poor quality medicine complaints and you, you receive them, you have to investigate them and find the root cause. And then afterwards, you have to come up with a corrective and preventive action mm -hmm. that will help prevent this in the future. Okay. Yeah. So this is like a brief description of majorly like getting um, side effects or adverse drug reactions mm -hmm. that anyone in the market is actually experiencing due to medicines and also poor quality medicines and guys i've mentioned this like um so many times like in my channel in case you come across a poor quality medicine or an adverse drug reaction there's a way in which you are going to report and she's going to take us through that so could you kindly like just in brief tell us how someone out there can report this okay so first uh, there is the basic of pharmacovigilance. When you go through pharmacovigilance basic training, mm -hmm. you are taught of the four basic requirements. They yeah. are called PrEP. Yeah. You need a patient, mm -hmm. so who is having this reaction. Yes. You need the reporter, so this could be the healthcare provider or mm -hmm. uh, dispensing chemist. Mm -hmm. And then you need uh, the product yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah. So that is the basics of reporting an adverse drug reaction mm -hmm. so you'll find a patient will come sorry i'm not said e which yeah. is the event, event. Now. yeah yes. which is the event yeah. so the patient will come to the healthcare provider mm -hmm. and say probably i'm having rash so yeah. the patient the reporter mm -hmm. the event is rash yeah. and then the product maybe they are using uh, they are taking a tablet mm -hmm. or they are using a cream mm -hmm. so that is the product mm -hmm. so once they report that whoever they report to they report the, the, the person who receives that information will then transfer to the manufacturing okay. uh, company yeah. who makes that product and then an investigation will be launched. Mm -hmm. So is it case by case? Mm -hmm. Is it affecting a wide range of people? Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it's a drug drug interaction. interaction maybe they yeah. are taking yeah. other drugs yeah. or they have <coughs> other health comorbidities that mm -hmm. are resulting to that. Mm -hmm. And then if it's serious, then it's forwarded to the regulator yeah. and more investigations are done. Mm -hmm. So, but of our recent case is a mm -hmm. current COVID vaccine okay. where you are having people who are injected yeah. mm -hmm. and they get malaise, they are very weak, yeah. they, are uh, they are tired, mm -hmm. there is 
uh, headaches, mm -hmm. but fever. it's not Pain. yeah fever. Yeah. So, yeah. so those cases they are reported, and if it's very serious, then mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. taken even further to Upsla, where people report about pharmacovigilance, yeah. and it, yeah. it's investigated. Mm -hmm. But these basic reactions, yeah. most of them you'll find they disappear after a while. Yeah. So if the, if something is not causing death mm -hmm. or it's not life threatening, yeah. then it's not regarded as adverse. Adverse, yeah. It's just yeah. an event. An event. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I hope that is clear and I'd encourage you to report just any adverse effect or any effect that you have after taking your medication. So now, um, we've looked at now your roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So let us look at our qualifications. So if there's someone out there who wants to venture into the field of pharmacovigilance, mm -hmm. how do they go about it? Okay. So uh, currently in our setup, pharmacovigilance is uh, for healthcare practitioners, yes. so pharmacists, doctors, yeah. and I think nurses. Yeah. Uh, first, you have to have your bachelor's degree in mm -hmm. either medicine, pharmacy, or nursing. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there's a master's program yeah. in pharmacovigilance, mm -hmm. and uh, this whole healthcare management. Yeah. But besides that, there are other courses that mm -hmm. one can take, mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. not going through the whole master's the whole program. Master's, you can do yes. like short short course program like mm -hmm. three months six mm -hmm. months mm -hmm. yeah so you can just do a course on pharmacovigilance yeah. so like for my case mm -hmm. i just did a short course on pharmacovigilance mm -hmm. and how to and mainly pharmacovigilance based in a manufacturing setup okay. yeah so they are different okay, okay. you can have pharmacovigilance mm -hmm. for clinical Hospital, setup yeah, community yeah. pharmacy because yeah, the, the yeah. reporting is very different different yeah so for me yeah. it was mostly geared to the pharma through to the manufacturing industry, industry. Yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. okay so yeah in case you're a pharmacist out there or you're in the medical profession mm -hmm. and you want to actually venture into the field just leave your um, information in the comment section or you can DM me on various um, social media sites. I always put them here. Then I can be able to like guide you on what you're supposed to do through her. Then now, um, after we've looked at now the qualifications, let us look at job um, availability. Because you see now for young pharmacists, like people who've just graduated, they're out there looking out for jobs. So are there like job opportunities and would you advise someone to actually venture into this field? Yes, I would actually advise. Mm -hmm. The job opportunities are there, but unfortunately the manufacturing industries who are combining maybe pharmacovigilance with quality assurance, yeah. but ideally the Pharmacy and Poisons Board would mm -hmm. want every manufacturing facility to have a qualified person for pharmacovigilance, yeah. every hospital, mm -hmm. and even community pharmacy. Community pharmacy so yes. the opportunities are there, mm -hmm. but it has not really been enforced. Yes, It is a good uh, venture. It, it expands your knowledge, it yeah. is very clinical, it yeah. creates that balance between the product mm -hmm. and the clinic and, and, the, and the efficacy part of it because okay. it is efficacious but mm -hmm. it is not safe. That yeah. is, that is yeah. the, the yeah. so it Thank tries to it. help you understand how to create a balance between quality, safety and efficacy, efficacy. of the okay. product. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I would advise people to venture into it, mm -hmm. even though it's the basic courses, yeah. learn Mm -hmm. Just equip yourself because knowledge is power, yeah, whether you will get the job yeah. or, not, or not, but you have something yeah. to your advantage. Yes. yes. And then um, I would always want to ask about now the future. Mm. Is this something that someone would actually venture into the future? Does the future of pharmacovigilance look promising? Or is it something that I would venture into now and then in future I don't know like what to do next because it can die off at any minute? Yeah, yeah the future is promising. Uh, for us, we are still developing the systems mm -hmm. and the reporting and sensitizing the patients yeah. but in the developed world mm -hmm. first world it's a, it's broad, broad. pharmacovigilance is yeah. it's very huge you hold a lot of responsibility yeah. as a pharmacovigilance yeah. pharmacist mm -hmm. so because we are growing yeah. and, the, and with the current trends mm -hmm. so I think in the next five to ten years yeah. it you will have we'll need so many consultants in pharmacovigilance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so many consultants in like therapies yes yeah. so, so as to ensure that patients are not getting these adverse drug reactions okay yes. so guys you've had me if you're a young pharmacist please try and take those courses online because you see the future is bright five years from now even if you do the course now it will be useful nothing you do always goes to waste yes so finally any parting shot to any pharmacist out there who wants to actually venture in the field what would you like want to tell them 
Okay. I don't know, maybe this is cliche, but I always believe <laughs> that truly the sky is the limit. Yeah. You need to make sure you maximize your potential, mm -hmm. whether in pharmacovigilance or in clinical pharmacy, mm -hmm. regulatory mm -hmm. pharmacy, mm -hmm. you have to put in the work to yeah. get uh, the results. Mm -hmm. Do not sit there and expect mm -hmm. that things will work out themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So just put in your best foot forward mm -hmm. and then the rest will come into will come into yeah. play later yeah slowly yeah. yeah so thank you so much for that advice and guys if you have any questions and if you are any person in the healthcare professional or any other like person who you might be watching this and you actually want to know how to reach out to any pharmacovigilance officer or any person who does like reporting of drug um, effects or poor quality medicines, kindly just go next to your pharmacy or to the hospital, they'll be able to advise you on how to do that. And it's important, any side effect or anything that you actually take in form of medication, herbal supplements or anything, if you face side effects, please make sure you report. It's good to report. So thank you so much. In case of any questions, please let me know in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for coming. Yeah, thank you, thank I'll you. see you on my next video. Bye-bye. Bye.